Welcome to the Journal of Vascular Surgery and some of our best articles for your review. The first, which is the editor's choice and the CME paper of the month is Asymptomatic Carotid Stenosis is Associated with Cognitive Impairment by Lal and Associates from the University of Maryland. They evaluated 82 patients with a greater than 50% carotid stenosis and matched them to a group with similar risk factors but no carotid stenosis and found that stenosis patients had worse cognitive scores and worse scores for memory and learning. Approximately 50% of patients were impaired in at least two domains with a de deficit that was mild to moderate. They used the breath holding index measurement and transcranial Doppler to show that the mechanism is likely hemodynamic due to hypoperfusion from a pressure drop across the stenosis with poor collateralization. The next paper, Lifelong Limb Preservation, a patient-centered description of lower extremity arterial reconstruction outcomes by Sheehan and co-authors from Boston and Washington. These authors developed a patient-centered calculation of major amputation risk during a patient's remaining lifetime to better answer the question, will I ever lose my leg? They identified all limbs undergoing first-time intervention for critical limb ischemia in a single institution from 2005 to 2013, and they calculated the traditional metrics of amputation-free survival and freedom from amputation, as well as proposing a new term, lifelong limb preservation, or LLP, which defines amputation as a failure, but deaths are not censored and therefore reflect that the LLP has been achieved. There were 1,000 limbs identified as having first-time intervention for critical limb ischemia. 46% were treated with angioplasty with or without stenting and 54% with bypass. Using life table analysis, the seven-year amputation-free survival was 14%. The freedom from amputation was 78% and the LLP was 86%. LLP was similar between patients undergoing angioplasty with or without stenting and those undergoing bypass. Using LLP, patients presenting with critical limb ischemia can be told that although we cannot guarantee how long they will live with revascularization, there is an approximately 85% chance that they will not lose their leg. These results show that durability of limb preservation efforts often exceed the life expectancy of patients and that using an LLP as an outcomes assessment provides a more accurate and patient-centered answer to the question, if I have this procedure, will I ever lose my leg? The third paper of the month, Cryopreserved venous allograft is an acceptable conduit in patients with current or prior angioaccess graft infection by Harlander Locke and the Vascular Low Frequency Disease Consortium. Use the standardized database from multiple participating institutions to determine the durability of cryopreserved allograft as an access conduit in the setting of infection. Cryopreserved allograft is used for hemodialysis accent in patients with no autogenous tissue for native fistula creation and with a recent arteriovenous graft infection. The authors assess, assess 457 patients who underwent cryopreserved placement of a femoral or saphenous vein or artery for hemodialysis access at 20 different hospitals. Grafts were placed more frequently in the arm than in the groin, and the mean time from placement to first dialysis use was 46 days, with the duration of functional graft use 40 months for cryopreserved vein and 21 months for cryopreserved artery. Local access complications occurred in 32% of patients. The early and late infections that occurred both occurred more frequently in the groin and late thrombosis 
occurred more frequently with cryopreserved artery. The one, three, and five-year primary patents was, was 58, 35, and 70, 17% for cryopreserved femoral vein, and 49, 17, and 8% for artery. The mean allograft fee per, of, per day of graft patency was $4.78 for cryopreserved vein and $6.97 for artery. The authors concluded that cryopreserved allograft provides an excellent conduit for angioaccess when autogenous tissue is not available in patients with current or past conduit infection, and that cryopreserved vein was associated with a higher patency and a lower cost per day of graft patency. Cryopreserved conduit also reduces the need for stage procedures and allows early use for dialysis. The final paper of the month, Durability of Iliac Artery Preservation, is associated with endovascular repair of infrarenal aortoiliac aneurysms by Faravar and co-authors from Cleveland Clinic. And they evaluated the long-term outcomes of endovascular repair of infrarenal aortoiliac aneurysms with and without anti-grade internal iliac artery perfusion using iliac branch devices in a prospective physician-sponsored investigational device exemption trial. 75 patients were treated with EVAR with a branch device and 255 were treated with a standard EVAR. They were all analyzed for technical success, perioperative outcomes, mortality, device patency, endoleak rates, and reinvention engines during a follow-up of 10 years. There were 87 branch devices deployed in 75 patients with the technical success of 97%, mortality at 30 days of 1.3%, and freedom from aneurysm-related mortality at 3, 5, and 10 years of 99%. Freedom from a type 1 or 3 endoleak at 3, 5, and 10 years was 99%, and freedom from secondary interventions at 3, 5, and 10 years was 86, 81, and 81%, respectively. The authors concluded that EVAR with infrarenal aortoiliac aneurysms with preservation of anti-grade flow to the internal iliac artery using a branch device is feasible and associated with long-term sustained durability in patients who meet appropriate anatomic criteria. We hope you enjoy the October JVS papers, and thank you very much for your attention.